Shalom Akayams. First, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Raka, Kodash, Tawada, who the world ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ. And double honors to the elders of Great Millstone who are bringing out this word in truth and spirit and sincerity. And double honors to all the camps on the highways and byways that are bringing out the word of Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. In truth and spirit and sincerity. All praises and glory to the Father and Son. Shalawa Makayam. As you see today's edification, it's talking about Yahweh Shai and his angels of war. The angels that Yahweh Shai is going to be coming with, his legions of angels to wage war with the nations. So we're going to go in, we're going to go into a bit about that today. We're going to talk. We're going to talk about that today. So without further ado. <clears throat> I'm going to start here in Matthew. The book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 26. We're going to start right here. We're going to go right to the heart of it. So in the book of Matthew, <coughs> excuse me, chapter 16, sorry, verse 26. We'll start, we'll start at verse 25. Now this is Yahweh speaking, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So we're going to start here. As a matter of fact, let's we're going to go to, before we start here, we're going to go to Acts. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. So verse 8. verse 7 so this is Yahweh Shai speaking here replying he's, and he says unto them speaking to the apostles to the disciples all right this is our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai he says it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father has put in his own power because for those of you that may not may know may not know only the father knows when the day of judgment is going to come upon us only he knows when that exact day is going to be. Not even Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, knows that day. Okay? That's why he's made it clear to the apostles. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put into his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. That's when the apostles and the disciples, that was the day of Pentecost, when they will receive spiritual powers. And he told them to wait. In um, Jerusalem, Judea, for this to take place in Jerusalem. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in, in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. All right? To the uttermost parts of the earth. So that means the four corners of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now that cloud was a chariot of the Lord's. Right? That was one of the Lord's chariots that received him. That was probably his chariot that received him out of the clouds. Right? Took him out of their sight. Verse 10. So it says, And while they and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Now these two men were angels, were angels of the Lord. They stood by him. They stood by them, stood by the disciples and the apostles in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? <clears throat> this same Yahweh Shai, which is taken from you into heaven, 
shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So the same way Yahweh went back to the Father in his chariot up into the heavens, the same way how he's coming, the same way how he's coming. Now we know this, we know this in different parts of the scriptures, that what the angels, and these are the angels, these are two angels telling the disciples and the apostles, telling them this, the same way how you saw your Lord, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, go up into the heavens, into the clouds, the cloud was his chariot, He, shall, he shall, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go up into heaven. So he's going to come the same way, that same way on that same day of judgment. Now, the angels has made this clear to the disciples one more time. But the disciples, this was made clear to the disciples many times before that by our Lord and Saviour himself. So they're all singing from the same hymn sheet. The angels didn't need to confer with Jehovah Shai about this. Because they already know. They know that alongside Yahweh Shai, on the day of judgment, they're all going to be summoned. The Lord is going to be summoned by his father, Yahweh. Then, Ye then Yahweh Shai is going to summon the angels. Now, Yahweh Shai made this clear to the disciples. Matthew 16, verse 25. Right, we'll start at verse 25. It says, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So that is a, a very simplistic scripture saying for all of us that have been born again into this truth and have slowly day by day, hour by hour, detached ourselves from Esau's demonic, satanic, immoral, corrupt society and all the things associated with this and that become more closer to Yahweh Shai and understanding who Yahweh Shai is, who is he coming to deliver, and we've repented, we've repented, so we've forsaken the things that we used to do. So he's saying here, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Because basically, it, it, to many of us, it will feel like losing our life because we have, you know, for we've been involved in this society and attached to all the little whistles and bells that comes with it and the more knowledge the scripture says the more knowledge you have the more sorrow you have the more you understand the scriptures the more sorrow you have the more grief it brings you because you get to realize this thing of ours is real in every essence so the more you understand it the more you read the bible the more you're taught by the prophets and the servants of the lord and the highways and byways and all the different media platform streams that we're using, the more knowledge you get, the more sorrow you have. And that's what causes a lot of our, some of our people that come into this truth to go back into the world. Because they get sorrow from it. They, they, they lose their life. Just like the scripture says here, and whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So when you've loosened yourself from the things in the world, you're getting more attached to the, the, what the scriptures are telling you. Verse 26. It says, for what man, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? Just like I said, many of there's some of us that will go back into the world. Because they don't want to give up the things of the world to try to align themselves with the scriptures, you know, to follow the laws and commandments and statutes to the best of your ability, to repent, to accept who we are, the Israelites, the children of Israel, to accept who the other nations are, so forth and so on. The truth of the scriptures. The truth of the scriptures is what we call baptism. When you are baptized, when they said they're born again, you're only born again when you wake up to this truth. So it says, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And many of us will con continue attaching ourselves. To the things of this world so that we can have gain in this world but we will lose our own soul that's why scripture says and what shall a man give in exchange for his soul verse 27 for the son of man shall come in 
in the glory of his father with his angels. So yeah, I wish I was making it quite clear to them. He's telling them the same thing that the angels said to the disciples when they took him, when he went up into the heavens, into his chariot. So this is before Yahweh Shai was crucified and died. He's, he's telling the disciples, for the Son of Man, which is Yahweh Shai, shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in, in the kingdom. Now many people don't even understand that one precept there. When Yahweh I said to them, and a lot of the disciples probably didn't understand it right at the time, when he said, there be some of you standing there which shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So they probably was thinking, that during the time when Yahweh Shai was walking the earth as a man over 2,000 years ago amongst the disciples, they probably thought he was coming back within five or 10 years of, of, him, of him leaving after he was crucified. But Yahweh Shai weren't talking about that. Yahweh Shai is talking about the last days when he said that there will be some of them standing there that shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in the kingdom because those disciples, those apostles, some of them are going to be here today in the reincarnation. Remember, the body is just a vessel. It's the spirit. So this is what that means. And we don't want to go into that today about reincarnation in the scriptures. That's why when the disciples asked you, Shai, when you, Shai said them, asked them, did they, did they know that John the Baptist was Elijah? It gave them a slight understanding of reincarnation because John the Baptist was Elijah in the reincarnation and everyone comes back in the third and fourth generation of their family line so they didn't understand that straight away when he was saying that to them because that's why they were thinking you know is the kingdom gonna happen during their lifetime Yahweh Shai is explaining to them that some of them shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom in his glory with his angels because they were going to be here some of them disciples and apostles were going to be here walking the earth preaching the word on the highways and byways preaching the word waking up the children of israel seeking the lost sheep of the house of israel just like what they did before when they was back during the times of yahweh shai two thousand years ago so this is what he meant this is talking about reincarnation. So Yahweh Shai is making it quite clear that he's going to be coming in the glory of his father with his angels. So the angels made the same, made the same statement to the disciples and the apostles when they came to receive Yahweh Shai. When they said, they said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So he's going to come the same way. The same way how he went, he's going to come again. He's not, he's not going to be riding a cloud, people. Just so you understand, that cloud was a chariot. He's not coming and riding a cloud like um, the, uh, what was that cartoon they used to make, the Arabian Nights, where you saw the man riding a carpet through the skies. He's coming in a chariot. That cloud was a chariot. Now, Daniel chapter 7 Daniel made the same statement as well here Daniel had the vision Daniel chapter 7 verse 13 I saw in the night visions and behold one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven those clouds were the chariots and came to the ancient of days who is the ancient of days that's the most high that's the father that's Yahweh that's who the world ignorantly calls God. That's the ancient of days that has no beginning and no end. And they brought him near before him. So what Daniel's vision there was, what Daniel saw there, he doesn't know when that's going to take place, but Daniel saw the vision that Yahweh Shai spoke about here. When Yahweh Shai said, For the Son of Man shall come in his glory, 
of his father and the angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. So he saw Yahushai come to his father. So Daniel saw the day of judgment, but doesn't know when it is. He saw it, he saw it taking place. He saw Yahushai coming to receive the seventh trumpet, the angel got the seventh trumpet to blow the seventh trumpet. He saw that. He's come to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. That's the Father, the Most High. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations and languages should serve him. So every kingdom, every nation is going to serve Yahweh Shai and the children of Israel. Every single nation on this planet Earth. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. Because nothing's going to be able to destroy the kingdom of heaven that Yahweh Shai is going to build alongside the Israelites, which are the angels, 144,000 and the one third here on the planet Earth. Nothing is going to be able to come up against it and to destroy it. But Daniel saw the vision of when Yahweh Shai came to the Father when the trumpet was blown. <coughs> All right. He saw the vision. Now, if we go to is it, uh, Revelations 1 first. The revelation, which is the revealing of Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, which the Mosai gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which, which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So John had the visions as well. That was brought to him by an angel of the coming of Yahweh Shai, of the destruction of America, of the war with the nations. That's what the whole book of Revelations is about. The salvation of the children of Israel. So one of Yahweh Shai's angels was sent to John to reveal this vision to him. And part of the vision here describes him. Yahweh Shai coming. Uh, go straight to the point. Here, Revelations 1 and 13. He says, In the midst of the seven candles, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle his head and his hair were white like wool because he has woolly hair afro-caribbean hair as white as snow so we would call that like a silver fox hair and his eyes were as a flaming fire <clears throat> as you know Yahweh Shai this is why his eyes will seem like a flame of fire because when Yahweh Shai was here walking the planet Earth, he was a wine bibbler. He drank a lot of wine. He didn't get drunk, but he drank a lot of wine. And his feet was like unto fine brass, as we know that's describing the color of Yahweh Shai. As if they burned in a furnace, as if they burned in a furnace after, after tense. If fine brass is burned in a furnace and you take it out, it's going to be very dark. That's how we know Yahweh Shai is a dark skinned black man, so called black man. And we know the children of Israel, everyone knows that the Israelites, the biblical Israelites, are a nation of so-called black people. And his voice was the sound of, of many waters. And he had in his right hand the seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength, because he's in his chariot. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid up his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and I am the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Immortality. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So when he says he has the keys of hell and of death, those are those that are in the grave. Hell is your grave. This is what he's referring to. This is what he's alluding to. It's not talking about he's got the keys to open up some myst mystical place called hell. All right? Now, if we go to Luke, Luke 9, 
Luke 9 verse 25. Verse 25. <clears throat> so this is your Shai speaking again. He says, For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me or of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. So for all those Israelites that are not gonna that, that refuse to accept this truth, to be born again into this truth, are gonna be ashamed on the day of judgment when he comes with those angels. When he shall come in his glory and in his fathers and of the holy angels. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of the most high. Once again, referring to reincarnation. Because Yahweh Shai didn't come back during the times of the disciples. He's not come back since. But this is what we're all waiting for. This is what salvation is about. This is what the judgment and, and, and the recompense is about. So if we go to, I think is it 1 Thessalonians? 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 or 2 that I want. Chapter 2, First Thessalonians. No, 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 it's not chapter 2. Hold on. I think it's 5, chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 3 so it says here for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon the woman with child and they shall not escape so no one's no one that's going to receive this day judgment is going to escape it but the nations and the world that we live in today those that control and run all the institutions all the world organizations globally and nationally we're going to come to a time where they're going to make you believe that everything's in good hands peace and safety they're going to come with some form some form of plan and ideology that's going to make the world believe that we've reached a stage of peace and safety but like the prophecy says then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child right and they shall not escape but ye bridging are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief why because you are all the children of light and the children of the day and we are not of the night nor of darkness right therefore let us not sleep as do others this is why we, we're out on the highways and byways and on all the different streaming platforms waking up the elect to warn in the other nations so that you are not asleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. Why? For they that sleep, sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. That's what it's going to be like to talk about the word. If you're asleep to this truth that we are bringing out to the nations. See, I say again, we are not preaching prosperity, religious, religion, what these churches and foundations and institutions are like to preach you. We are preaching you a truth of the Bible that there's going to be an almighty judgment coming. And it's Yahweh Shai that's going to deliver it with the army of angels that are going to be with him, the legions of angels. So it says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet. Why? For the hope of salvation. Because ultimately, those of us that woke up to this truth, what we're looking for is two things. Salvation in the kingdom of heaven. 
and judgment to Esau, Eden, and all the heathen nations that played an almighty part in our destruction. Now, go to is it six I want. jump down here so it says here it says despise not prophesying because this is what we do we are prophesying we're bringing out the word of Yahweh we are telling you about these things before it happens to try to prepare you so the warning is here it says here despise not prophesying because many people take this thing for a joke when we prophesy and they think, ah, oh, all these guys think they are, that they know this, that they know that, and those know that. Right? It says, prove all things. And this is what we do. We prove all things in scripture and in the secular world. And we show you how one lines up with the other. Two and two equals four. We don't get to a calculation where we say two and two equals three. When we're breaking down the scriptures, it's two and two equals four. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. And what is that, people? We, I say it all the time. It's the scriptures. It's waking up to this truth. Repenting. Coming back to your Lord's commandments, statutes to the best of your ability. Learning who we are. And bringing on that message to your fellow Israelites. Letting them know. What is the gospel? What is the good news? We are the children of Israel. Salvation is for the elect of Israel. Repent. Come back to who you are because the Lord is truly coming. The almighty power, the almighty Yahweh, Shem Shai, his son is coming with these angels. It says, abstain from all appearance of evil. Now, if we go back to 2nd, 1st Thessalonians, let's jump down here, verse 16. It says here, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. So that goes back to what we spoke about earlier in Acts 1. When the, the, when the angels that came to collect Yehoshai, to deliver him up to his chariot, that brought his chariot for him and he went up into the heavens into his chariot because the cloud that he went up into was his chariot so when the angel said here once again in acts chapter 1 verse 11 which also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven because they were amazed when they saw the chariot in the clouds this same yahweh which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven so Paul says here in 2nd 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 for the Lord which is Yahweh himself shall descend from heaven with a shout how is why is Paul so certain about that because the angels told him that alongside the disciples they were told this they were they were told this directly by the angels that came to deliver Yahweh so Paul can make that claim. He says, look, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the most high and the dead in the Messiah shall rise first. Because many souls that are not here today that haven't come back yet in the reincarnation are going to be raised from their graves are going to be raised from their graves because every single one has got to come in front of the judgment seat every one of us whether you've done good or bad every one of us has got to come in that judgment seat and i don't think people even understand that if you um the scripture when yahusha when yahusha was crucified and the dead were raised the dead that had come out of their grave walked into jerusalem the Romans and the Israelites witnessed that. They witnessed these things happening. And he split the temple in two. It was a terrifying sight for them, but they had, they had actually witnessed this. So when we read about this, you know, this is when people choose to decide to believe some parts of the Bible and not others. That same thing's going to happen again. 
when Yahweh Shai comes back, the dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise first. So all of us, those that were in the truth, that, have, that haven't come back yet in the reincarnation, are going to raise out of their grave because they're all going to be here to join in in the judgment. It says, then we which are alive. So those of us that are alive, that believe this truth, that understood in the spirit who we were, and accepted and repented and came back to the scriptures then we which are alive and remain shall be what caught up together with them in the clouds so you know we're not going to all going to get up we're not going to be getting up to float in some clouds right so this is what we must understand that we're not going to be all up there on our um, acid or lsd floating in the clouds per se all right those clouds are chariots that we're going to go up into to do what? To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we forever be with the Lord. Those are the elect. So all of those chariots, when the Lord comes with his angels, all of those chariots that are going to be across the four corners of the world, where Israel has been scattered, are going to come to deliver just the elect of Israel. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So these words should be truly, truly comforting to you if you truly believe in your spirit. If you truly believe that what Paul wrote here, what the angels said to the disciples, the same thing, how this is going to go down, is going to take place. Now the scripture says here, is it Mark, Mark 13, I think I want. Yeah. We'll start at verse 22. It says, For false messiahs and false prophets shall rise. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, they've created a show on Netflix called The Messiah. And believe me, a lot of people are going to take to that and actually believe that story. And that whole story that they're showing you on Netflix about the Messiah is total BS. None of it is scriptural. Not a single thing of it is scriptural. <laughs> because one thing we know, when, the, when our Lord comes back, when the Messiah comes, he's coming in his glory. He's not going to meet them as a man. How do we know that? Let me just quickly pull out that precept for you. Uh, is it here? Is it Isaiah 47? We know this because Isaiah prophesies this. Isaiah says, uh, where is it? Is it 47? Yeah, Isaiah 47. <clears throat> he says here, we're going to go straight to the point. Isaiah 47 verse 3. It says, thy nakedness shall be uncovered. And that's what's happening. We are uncovering the lies that have been perpetrated about the scriptures about the nations, about salvation, about Yahweh Shai. So we have uncovered thy nakedness of who? Babylon. Because the main perpetrator of these crimes comes from Babylon. Babylon is the United States of America. All right? As we all know. The word Babylon means what? Comes from the root word Babel, which means confusion. It's the United States of confusion, America. That's why, it's, that's why when it says in the first says, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne. So, so anyway, just get, get straight to the point. It says, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. So when you see a show like The Messiah on Netflix that they've just recently put out there, it's another confusion that's coming out of Babylon that they're putting out there. Because nothing about that is factual, according to the scriptures. Nothing about that. Because when our Lord comes, he's coming in. in we've read the scriptures already. He's coming in in, in all his father's glory. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a sight to see, boy, truly. In all his father's glory. He's not coming as some Iranian with long hair, walking the earth, you know, 
the Palestinians and trying to walk into Israel and trying to make peace with Israel and asking Israel to let in the Palestinians and all of that BS and he's coming here to do world peace. No, the Lord is coming to wage war, war, war with his angels. That is the truth of the scriptures. So he says, I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. Why? Because he's going to be in his celestial form, in all his, in, in all his glory and all his power. He says, as for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, our of hosts, is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Of Israel. Not of the world, of Israel. All right? Just so you understand. So he's coming in all his glory. We've read the scripture to show he's coming in all his glory. So when we go back to Mark 13, and it says here, For false messiahs and false prophets shall rise. And like I said, one of those that they're giving you another false prophet by giving you that show, The Messiah, on Netflix. And shall show signs and wonders to seduce. And they're going to do that. Esau, the Edomites, they're going to show you some serious signs and wonders to seduce you. To make you believe. They're going to make you believe that the Messiah has come, that Yahweh has come, they're going to cause some kind of confusion. They're going to sell you white Jesus again, coming from the skies in, in, in some form or shape. Believe me when I tell you. To seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. That's why it says that. Because they're going to be able, they're going to seduce the two thirds. They're going to seduce all of those that are still in those churches. They're going to seduce all of those that worship in Islam and Buddha and all those different religions. They're going to seduce them. They're going to seduce the Jehovah Witnesses, the Seventh-day Adventists, the Catholic Church, the Protestant Church, the Episcopal Church, the Baptist Church, the Pentecostal Church. They, Esau is going to seduce them with their false prophets and their false messiah. And this is why it explicitly, it explicitly says here, if it were possible, even the elect... Because they're not going to be able to do the elect. Why? Because the Most High has kept back a remnant of Israel, who are the elect, the one third, who are going to receive salvation. And those are the ones that are going to wake up to this truth that we are preaching. So it says, But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all these things. But in those days, after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall. Right. This is not talking about the stars or the, you know, because the stars are planets out in the sky that you see. It's not talking about the stars that you see through your telescope are going to fall from heaven. This is talking about nuclear missiles. These stars that are going to fall from heaven are the nuclear missiles that are going to be fired upon one another. This is why it says, but, after, but in those days, after the tribulation, the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give her light. Because of the nuclear fallout, this is going to take place. Those stars that are going to fall from heaven. <clears throat> I mean, look, if you truly understand this in the spirit, you see what it says here. It says, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. That's what's going to cause them to shake. You have nuclear weapons that explode before they hit the ground. They explode in the air. They cause more damage. And then you've got nuclear bombs that explode when they hit the target. So when they're trying to hit targets where you've got underground military bunkers. So when you have one country firing it on the other country's military targets and they're in their underground bunkers, they have nuclear weapons that physically hit the ground. And then when they're destroying cities, when they're firing on each other's cities, so if Washington DC fires one on over to Moscow, to the city, it will explode in the air because it, it causes much more damage. And all the radiation and all the fire and everything that comes from it. And that's why it says, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. So, I've always said this, that at some point during the nuclear war, I've at the beginning, the middle, I can't tell you exactly when. But that has to be good to go before the deliverance come. And it says, and then shall you see the son of man coming. So when the nuclear war is kicked off at some point. That's when Yahweh Shai is going to open up those skies in those chariots with his army of angels. So then shall you see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. Right? He's not going to be coming flying in the clouds like Superman or Batman flying through the sky. He's coming in his chariot, man. He's coming in his almighty power with great 
power and glory. And we know that because Isaiah said here, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, talking about America, Babylon the Great, Edom. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. So he's coming in all his glory and all his power. He's not coming as a man, like what they're showing you in that stupid shoulder Messiah. <laughs> you know, I just watch it out. I watch those sort of shows to see where they're actually taking it, to see, you know, what is it they're trying to sell the people again. So it says here, and then shall he send his angels. So these are the most high, the Yahushua's angels of war. And they shall what? Gather together his elect. They're not coming to gather anybody else. I don't care what these churches keep on putting out there. There is no scripture in the Bible that says our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai, is coming to deliver any other person but the elect, the chosen of the children of Israel. He's not sending his angels to gather Esau, the Edomites, or the Moabites, or the Hamites, or the Ishmaelites. He's only sending them to gather the elect, the elect, the elect, the chosen. Who are the chosen? The children of Israel. So it's only a portion of them. From where? From the four winds, from the four corners, because we are mixed amongst the other nations. Just so you understand that. Some of Israel will look like some of these other nations that I just spoke about. But they, they may look like them, but they are not of that nation. He's only coming to deliver the elect. And he's coming to deliver them from the four winds. And his angels are the ones that are coming to do that. From the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. That's what he's coming to do. Now, Yahweh made a statement to... Um, uh, let's see if I can find it. I know it's in Matthew. Here. So he made this statement here to Peter, <clears throat> if you remember, for those who know the story. This is when Peter cut the ear of one of the, the soldiers that came to deliver Yahawashai to Herod. Right? And it says there, and behold, one of them which was with Yahawashai stretched out his hand. Um, yeah, stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest. I think that was a Caliphus, Caphias, uh, um, I can't pronounce his name, right? He was the high priest at the time. He struck the servant of the high priest and smote off his ears, right? That was Peter that did that, struck off his ears, all right? Then said Yehoshua unto him, put up again thy sword into, thy, into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. And what is that? Allude to Revelations 13 and 9 and 13 and 10. Yahweh is making a point of that. All those, <clears throat> where was I? He said, Here, put up again thy sword unto his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. So Yahweh has made that point himself. Our Lord and Saviour. So when you read something like, I'm going to come back to that, but it's just another scripture just came to me in the spirit. Right? When we read something like this in, in Revelations 13 and 9, we must understand that what the angel told John the Revelator is going to happen in every essence. That's why he said, he made it clear, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. All right? He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patient of faith of the saints, who are the saints, the Israelites. So the angel made this clear to John the Revelator. This is going to go down. All those that were taken into captivity, our ancestors were taken into captivity. All those people that played the part in that, the Ishmaelites, the Hamites, and the Edomites, will go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. All of our people that were killed by the sword, by these nations eye for eye tooth for a tooth it's going to happen they're going to be killed by the sword many of them are going to kill by the sword that's why when i say to you and i've said this many times before 
two thirds of all the heathen nations are going to die during the destruction and only one third of them are going to survive it. And the Edomites are going to go into hardcore slavery, hardcore slavery captivity. And the other nations are all going to become subservient to us. And some of them amongst those nations will be in captivity as well. But the majority of them are going to be subservient to us in every way. They're going to be going into like what you call indentured servants. So there's no escaping it. So when the scripture says here, when Yahweh Shai says himself here, put up again thy sword, he said to Peter. Why? For all that take up the sword shall perish with the sword. It's going to happen. I don't care what your churches tell you. I don't care what these Catholics or Protestants or Seventh-day Adventists, this thing is going to happen. Esau is going to be wearing yokes of iron around his neck, ankle and so forth. Because this is what the angels are coming to do when they deliver the elect of Israel. And all of the Israelites that are going to receive spiritual powers when their bodies are changed from mortal to immortal, when they go up into those chariots and they become immortal and have spiritual powers, are going to go around and put, gather these heathen nations up and put them into captivity. The majority of them. And for those that are going to go and become indentured servants, they're going to serve us. They're going to be doing, they're all going to be subservient to the children of Israel. Because we are going to be immortals like Yahweh Shai and going to have spiritual powers. So he says, this is what he says to Peter. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father? So he said, look, Peter, I'm just, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not paraphrasing it, but I'm just kind of giving to you in a different flavor so you can understand. He said, look, Peter, he prays, he said, I can't pray to my father. And he shall what? Presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. 12 legions there's 7,000 in a legion right I believe it's 7,000 because he's, he mentions legions because it's during the times of the Romans right so if we say Roman legions just so Peter can understood what he was speaking of uh, numbers okay I think it's 7,000 About 5,000, it says here, hold on, Roman legions, have a quick look. I believe it is, let's see what it says down here, okay. Men, 12 or 5,200 men, this was later changed to nine cohorts, da 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 da. It says there were smaller legions of about 1,000, 1,500. Okay, so Roman legion was roughly about 5,200 men. All right, so Yahweh Shai says to Peter, what it says here, the size is typically, yeah, 10 cohorts, I don't legionnaires, do, do, do. Yeah, so it kind of says here, 5,000. 200 men plus, plus 120 auxiliaries and that. So say five and a half thousand men is in a legion, right? It probably varies with who's commanding them, right? So when he says to Peter here, he says, thinkest thou that I cannot pray to my father, right? If he didn't want to go through the crucifixion and he shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. Simple as. <laughs> Remember, it took two angels to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, you know. The, excuse me, the five cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. So, Matthew, he says here, But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? So he knew. Yahushua knew he's got to go through this, otherwise it would make the word of his father a lie. The word of the Most High would be a lie that he gave to the angels to give to the prophets. He says the scriptures has to be fulfilled. And I'm just saying the same thing. I'm telling you the same thing that Yahweh Shai is saying to you. The scriptures have to be fulfilled, people. Has to be. I don't care what your churches tell you. I don't care what your deacons, what your best friend tells you, or your neighbor, right? Or your priest, or your pastor, or your doctor, or your nurse, or your psychologist. The scriptures have to be fulfilled. That is the bottom line. So when we read scriptures like this that says, he that leads to captivity shall go into captivity. It's going to happen. There's no way out. I don't care how 
friendly, friendly you are with an Edomite, so-called white man, he's your best mate, you know, he may, he may have been fixing your car all your life, he's been your mechanic and this and that, your best buddies with him and so forth. If he's an Edomite, people, he is going to go into captivity. Why? Because the scriptures have to be fulfilled. Yahweh didn't go through all of that pain and torture and crucifixion and death for Esau to get away with it at the end. Or for the most side to change his mind say, oh, you know what? Forget about what he did, Yahweh Shai. Forget about what he did, son. Don't worry about it. You did a good job, but don't worry about it. We're going to forgive the Edomites. It's not going to happen. It would make the word of the Most High a liar. Because it was his word he gave to the angels to give to the prophets, which we are breaking down today to the children of Israel to let them know only the elect are going to be delivered. All the nations are going to become subservitude to the Israel and the nation of Edom are going to go into hardcore captivity and some of the other nations, people of the other nations like the Ishmaelites and the Hamites who played a major part in our captivity are going to go into captivity as well alongside Esau. Yokes of iron around their necks, their wrists, their things. We're going to be selling their children. We're going to be separating their families. It's going to happen. I don't care what anyone says because the Lord himself says the scriptures have to be fulfilled. That is the ultimate thing. That's why he's coming with his army. He's coming to fulfill the scriptures. So let's go to is it Revelations 12? Oops. No, 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 no. Let's go to Luke 12 first. Luke 12. Shalom to the Akiyams on the comment board. More praises. Luke 12. Boy, because this is hard for a lot of people to digest. This is why a lot of people fall off because they want to go back into the world, back into the church. Back in, they don't, they don't. They can't. This It starts off as sweet. This word is sweet when people first come into it and then it gets bitter. Because the scripture says, it says the more, the more, the more, let me just forget if I can find it. It says the more knowledge, the more sorrow. I believe this is here once. I know it's in Proverbs. 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 Here it is, Ecclesiasticus, right here. Because this is this is what happens to many people that come into the truth when they actually get this knowledge. For in much wisdom is much grief, absolutely. Because the more you know, the more it does play on your mind. That's why a lot of people like to stick their head in the sand. Don't want to know. No, don't tell me. No, no, no. Don't want to hear. Put their put their hands in their ears. Don't want to hear. No, 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 no. Don't tell me. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. Because the more of this truth you find out about who you are, the more truth you find out what these Edomites and these nations did to our ancestors and continue to do today, the more you find out that only Israel and the elect of Israel can be delivered, the more you understand that the United States of America is going to be totally wiped off the, 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 the map, completely destroyed by nuclear fire and the chariots of the Lord. And that the, all of the nations are going to go to war in a nuclear war before our Lord comes. The more knowledge you get from these scriptures, it does increase the sorrow. It does. That's why a lot of brothers and sisters fall off, fall away. Because they think, no, this is too much. They don't want, they don't want to know this. So they call us the prophets of doom. But it's a truth. The more knowledge that we get, the more understanding we get, the more sorrow. Because we're a boy. But for us that are in the truth to understand this, it's like, yeah, this is beautiful. Because we know what's coming. We know what our end is going to be if we're worthy of salvation and we know what the end of the other nations are going to be. So, where was I going to go to? Luke 12, I said, right? Did I bring it up? Yeah, Luke 12. So Luke 12, verse 8. Yeah. It says, Also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of the Most High, and this is all we're doing. We are confessing Yahweh Shai, right? We are confessing him before the Son of Men. So also shall confess before the angels of the Most High. 
So that's what's happened. Your names are being confessed before the angels of the Most High. But he that denies me before men shall be denied before the angels of the Most High. So all of those that deny that have been all of those that deny Yahweh Shai before men. So all of those of us that think no, 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 this is total BS. Of one deny Yahweh Shai before men shall be denied before the angels of the Most High when he comes to do what? When he comes to deliver the elect that he spoke of. So Revelations 17, no 15. Let's quickly start at 15 here. So I'll bring out some scriptures in here. Revelations 15. So, this is all alluding to the great day, yeah? And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of the Most High. Right? So what's the wrath of the Most High? That's the judgment, the destruction. Those plagues are the nuclear weapons, the nuclear fallout. And what's going to come from those the radiation the pollution all of the different things that are going to come from those nuclear weapons are going to make up those seven last plagues and i saw and i saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast who are those that got the victory over the beast those that did accept the mark of the beast which is the rfi digit that we tell you about over and over again the mark of the beast is the microchip the RFID chip that's going to replace the, the um, monetary systems with a digital currency. And it's going to have all your information, all your ID, your driving license, your passport, your doctors, everything to do with who you are. Your social security, it's going to, all of that's going to be on the RFID chip. And over his image and over his mark, which is the RFID chip, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of the most high the sea of glass is those that are going to be the chariots over the they're going to, the chariots are going to be in the firmament up in the up in the skies up in the clouds that's the sea of glass it's going to be the firmament that we're looking through through the chariots right and they sing the song of moses the servant of the most high the song of the lamb saying great and marvelous are thy works lord Power almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. Not king of the world, king of the saints. Yahweh Shai of the children of Israel. The saints are the children of Israel. Alright? Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou, for thou only art holy. For what? For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. They've got to manifest in all in front of all these nations are the judgments. And many of those judgments are going to come through what? Through the nuclear war, through the nuclear missiles at the Mosai. It's going to get the nations. Once he says to the, to the angels that are holding back the four wings, game on, the seventh trumpet gets blown, that's it. The judgments that's going to manifest is going to be the nuclear war. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of testimony in the heavens was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. All right? And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath, not of the love and the kisses and the roses, but the wrath of the Most High, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke for the glory of the Most High and from his power. And no man was able to enter into this temple till when? Till the seven plagues of the angels were fulfilled. So if we go over into Revelation 16, it talks about that. And it says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of the Most High upon the earth. That's the nuclear war. That's the vials that they're pouring out. The wrath upon the earth, the plagues that are in those vials are the nuclear destruction. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, which is what the RFID chip. For those that accepted the mark, those that don't believe when we're telling them that the RFID chip, not religion, not Catholicism, not Protestantism, not praying and worshipping white Jesus or or 
whatever thing they keep telling you, the mark of the beast is the RFID chip. All right? The word mark in the Greek means karagma. All right? So it says, which had the mark of the beast and, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of the dead men. And every living soul died in the sea. This is from the pollution from the nuclear fallout. And the, listen, <laughs> this is what the angels are going to be doing. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of the waters and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, thou art righteous. So they're loving it. They've seen all their death and destruction. And they're saying to the Lord, Yahweh who's their king, you're righteous. Because they're in their right minds. The reason why we don't understand, a lot of people don't want to accept this, because the children of Israel in particular are not in their right minds right now. But those that have come into this truth and have woken up to this truth, understand. Why are the angels celebrating this mass death that's going on? They're saying to the Lord, thou art righteous, cheerleading. O Lord, which are and was and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. They're so happy for it. For they have what? Because they know what these devils have done. The angels know every Israelite that dies and goes back up to the heavens, once they're up in the heavens, they're praying to the Lord saying, when, when are you going to come down for these devils? Because when they're back in their, when they're in their spiritual form in, in the heavens, they understand everything now. So Kobe Bryant understands. Right now, Kobe Bryant's cheerleading for the Lord to come and deliver his judgment. So the angels are saying, for they have what? Shed the blood of the saints and the prophets. They've killed them. They know what they've done to the children of Israel. And thou hast given them blood to drink. Why? For they are worthy. The scriptures have to be fulfilled, people. These nations, especially Esau, Edom, are going to be worthy when they see this mass death. Billions, I'm going to say again, billions of people are going to die on Judgment Day. There's no getting out of it. None. Yahweh couldn't get out of it. He had to face up to his judgment. And he said already, we said this already, all right? He says, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? That thus it must be. It has to be fulfilled. When he said to Peter, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall give me more than 12 legions of angels? But he said, no, he can't do that. Why? Because the scriptures have to be fulfilled. So this has to be fulfilled. The billions of people that are going to die on judgment has to take place. Why? This is why. For they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets and thou hast given them blood to drink for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. That scorching men with fire is the nuclear bombs. Whew. Some are going to die from the radiation. Some are going to die from the actual, when the, when the actual bomb explodes. And the fire comes from it. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of the Most High because they got a curse out of the Most High, which had power over these plagues. And look, and they repented not to give him the glory. Because then, listen, these heathen nations, these Edomites, are not going to repent to give the Most High the glory. They're going to curse him out. They're going to curse him out because the amount of death that's going to take place, remember, two thirds of the heathens and two-thirds of Israel are going to die. There are, right now as I speak, there's roughly seven and a half billion to eight billion people on this planet Earth. If the Lord was to turn up tomorrow, roughly, roughly four million will dead. Four million people. Four billion, sorry. <laughs> and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the sea of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness and they gone their tongues for pain. That darkness comes from the nuclear fallout. And, you know, it goes right into it, so I'm not really gonna go down into it. This one here, so. We're gonna go to one more. Revelations 21, we'll finish here, 21. And it says here, Sorry, people. Sorry, people. Yeah. 
Sorry about interruption, people. Ugh. So, I mean, you can read through Revelation 16, the rest of what, how it's going to go down. The War of Armageddon, it goes right into, you know, it literally goes right into the War of Armageddon and it tells you the judgments and by the Almighty and so forth and how they're going to go into the War of Armageddon. Yeah? And, it's, and you know, it says it right here. It says, and he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Right? The War of Armageddon starts where? In the Valley of Jehoshaphat in the Middle East. But we're going to finish here Revelations 21. Yeah, probably finish here. Revelation 21 verse 9. Right. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Who is the Lamb's wife? That's the elect of Israel. That's the one third. That's the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away into the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from the Most High. Right? Those are the Israelites, the elect, that have got up into the chariots. Just so you understand. Having the glory of the Most High and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates. Right? Listen carefully. And the gates, and at the gates, twelve angels. So we've got twelve angels guiding twelve gates, right? That um, that John the Revelator is seen, right? And names written thereon, which are the names of what? Of all of, of anyone? Of or whoever believes in Yahweh Shai can come through these gates. The only people that are going into the kingdom of heaven are these people here. The names of who? Of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Simple as that. The only people, listen, the only, the only reason why, the only way the heathens are coming into the kingdom of heaven is to build it up again after it's been destroyed after World War III. Because Israel will be flattened during World War III. But Israel. As you know, the promised land from the Great River Nile in Egypt all the way to the Great River Euphrates in Iraq is the promised land. Shall be built up again and it's the heathens that are going to do the work. They're going to build it up stone by stone, brick by brick. But the only people that are going to be living in the kingdom, access to living in the kingdom, are going to be the children of Israel. Those that descend from the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. And at the beginning, it's only going to be the elect, the one third that are going to receive the salvation during the judgment when the Lord comes with his angels. It's as simple as that. So, like I said, I don't think I need to go into more detail. I just really want you to, just once again, another edification of how this thing's going to go down with again. And, you know, the Lord and his angels, what is, what is it all about? Why is the Lord coming with all of his angels, basically, so you can get an understanding? That the Lord made it quite clear the same way how you saw him go is the same way how he's coming. Alright? It's as simple as that. And he's going to be coming with the leaders of angels to gather the elect from the four winds to judge Esau, to judge the other nations. He's coming to bring salvation to the elect of Israel. And two thirds of Israel are going to die. Two thirds of the heathen nations are going to die during the destruction. No ifs, no buts, or maybe. Why? Like we said before. But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled? Because it's got to be fulfilled. That thus it must be. It must be. The Lord said this himself. It must be fulfilled. So all of these things are going to take place. All of these things. The only people that are going to receive salvation are going to become immortals and have spiritual powers and rule the world with a rod of iron are the children of Israel and only the elect of Israel. And the remaining of the children of Israel... Those that are going to die, just so you understand, the two-thirds that die during the destruction are going to come back as Israelites in the kingdom as our children. And when I say our children, for those who receive salvation, it's going to come back as their children, as the elect's children. And they're going to be in their right mind. Simple as. So, I pray this was an edifying lesson for all the Akiyams that tuned in live, all the brothers and the sisters that tuned in live, for all those that may tune in later. Once again, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rekha Kodesh, 
who the world ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ. Shalawam Akayams, until we meet again, all praises and glory to the Father and Son. Shalawam.